Okay, so welcome back everybody. On this video, I wanna talk about the independent brands. They say, you know, Eric, you mostly talk about, you know, the four that usually are the most hyper popular and whatnot. And uh, they asked me about the independent brands. So in this video, I wanna cover five of my favorite independent brands. Now, if by any chance I leave any one of these other brands out, it doesn't mean I don't like them. It's just today, in the summer of 2023, these are the five brands that I guess resonate the most with me on how they look, you know, how they appeal to me, something that I would wear. A lot of these brands have watches that look out of this world, amazing. I would love to talk about them. I would love to see them, but I'm not really sure if I would, you know, really wear it and enjoy it. Um, so I guess those would fall into the lower half of my 10 favorite, but this video is going to focus on my five favorite. So the first brand that I want to discuss is Grubel 4C. This is a brand that in 2011, when they released that GMT, I remember clearly seeing this watch for the first time on pictures, whether it was social media, internet, whatnot at that moment, might've even been print media by at, the, at that time. But I remember when I saw that watch, it like blew my f mind. I was like, there's a globe in there. You know, that alone completely freaked me out. And then I also remember, I remember going to, you know, one of my first IWJG shows when they were actually good, you know, not that they're terrible right now, but it's a whole different vibe there right now. It's just not what it used to be in that sense. You know, back then it was just so different. But, and I remember being able to see one and hold it in my hand and it was just like, like mind explosion. Now that wasn't the first watch at that time that was doing like weird, crazy, out of this world stuff. But it was that first watch that I felt to me was like on a whole nother dimension, man. I mean, that watch was just out of control. I remember seeing it. I remember vividly getting this excitement. Like if I just started doing watches like from the beginning and it just blew me away. I'm, I'll never forget. And the price was so expensive, which is still expensive today, but you know, it was that moment when I realized that there was another level to the watch world and to horology where they can take it to a whole nother spectrum where they can add so many other elements and make it, I don't know, just transcend more beyond horology and almost into art. I feel like that was my first experience with something of that nature. Another model that I like from them is also going to be the GMT Earth. I think that it's maybe more of the modern trimmed down version of the original GMT was a big watch. But that GMT Earth, whew, especially in that titanium, I mean, I think that's a watch that I really would enjoy if I owned. And I like them. I think that's a brand that early on, before most of the others really decided to push the envelope and take things to other levels. Of course, at that time, there was other brands we're going to discuss as well, which was also doing crazy stuff. But this is one of the watches that really sucked me in at that moment. Number two on this list is going to be Beauvais. I think that Beauvais is one of those brands that not everybody knows. But man, have they always been just something out of this world. There's not many watches in the market that look like a Beauvais. That whole traditional look that they have where it almost looks like a pocket watch, but it's obviously converted into a wristwatch. One, I think, is extremely unique, and just nobody else does that. And then another thing is the level of details that these watches have. I mean, with all the hand engraving on all the inside of the movement parts and all these different layers to give you this different look that no other brand has to me, it's just out of control. I mean, Beauvais has been a brand that the last... 15 years, every time I see one, I just, I, I can't help but to look at it. You know, it just is something completely different. And granted, with a lot of these independent brands, most of the times when you show it to somebody that's not really like into watches that deep, you know, that's not like a watch head, mostly they'll say, nah, I don't like it. Of course, you know, they want a standard Submariner, you know, something like this, or, or maybe their head hasn't really wrapped around yet to get to that level of grail, grail watch that Beauvais is even on the radar, 
One of my favorite models from the brand is the Brainstorm Chapter 2. I feel that, wow. I mean, what is this thing? I absolutely love it. It just looks like horological art in motion on your wrist. I mean, nothing else just really looks like that. I know that we're getting right now in an era where a lot of brands are pushing the envelope and they're starting to mesh and merge together as far as looks. But Bove really has always stood out to me and I really, really have a deep appreciation for what they do and the models that they have. Another one that also is one of my favorites would be the Virtuosos. I feel that any of them is probably like good for me. That Virtuoso 11 is like, Talk about all that engraving inside there. I mean, it just looks, man, I'm talking about, this is a watch that you bring into a conversation that you just want to shut the conversation down. I'm sure that there's other independents out there that have a little bit more hype, but I guarantee you that if you walk in wearing one of these, no one else will have it. Okay, so number three in my list is kind of like a weird one for me. I thought and I said, is this really an independent brand? And I know it is, by the way. I know that it is an independent brand. But I guess they're doing good in the marketing sense and penetrating the market that I even had to question it for a second. But I would say that number three is going to be Jacob & Co. Um, I say that they're definitely a independent brand because, I mean, let's just face it. But, you know, Jacob is one of those brands that came out of nowhere. I'm going to go ahead and say that when they had the, the five time zone watch, you know, the old one from back in the day, I could never really say that I wanted one. I'm just being honest with you, you know. It was never that moment where I was like, man, I want one of those five time zone pieces, you know, even when all the celebrities and the musicians were wearing them, it just wasn't really, it just wasn't my speed. But ever since that they came out with that Astronomia, I feel like the Astronomia was that first watch that, really had me look at them and say, whoa. It gave me that first feeling when I first saw that Grebel 4C GMT globe. I had that same reaction, and that was like years later. There's a big gap in the difference in time, you know, when that finally happened. But I would say that Jacob is definitely pushing the envelope, and if you get into stuff that's independent, they are definitely on my list. Some of my favorite watches from them is going to be I would say it'd be the Mystery Turbion. I mean, listen, the, the Astronomias and all these other watches are amazing. I would say that the Godfather and stuff like that, although are cool and pretty much a work of art, it's not really my swing. Again, I'm talking about watches that not only do I like, but I would also wear, like, like and wear often, okay? I feel like that Mystery Turbion is... Bad ass. I mean, when you're talking about a blinged out watch, just nothing else looks like that. And it is unbelievable. I also do like the caviar. There's not much to it. It's a very simplistic case that's laid out with a bunch of diamonds and a tourbillon. But something about that just screams Jacob and Co. to me. It's also a model that they've had out for a while. But there's many other models that do spark my interest, okay? Starting with that Bugatti, the Chiron watch. I mean, that looks... <laughs> I, we can't name anything else. The closest thing to that would be the La Ferrari from Hublot. But I also felt from the very beginning that that didn't really like deliver. It just basically didn't have a sapphire engine block running on your wrist. I mean, how cool is that? Although I do find that watch a little bit bigger and maybe not my speed, I do feel that the Mystery Turbion would be more up my alley. Now, number four on my list is a must-have, not because everybody would expect me to say it, but because, contrary to belief, I do love Jorn. FP Jorn is a brand that right now is, I mean, I want to say it's almost a leader in the independence, but I guess they're the leader in that style of independence because, you know, they definitely tend to look more like a conservative dressy watch with a lot of cool stuff going on inside. Some of the models that spark my interest would be the Chronometer Optimum and the Chronometer Resonance. I mean, these are models that just look, I mean, how does it get better than that? The way that they lay out their dials is so unique to them that from a mile away, you can see that it's a Jorn. This is a brand that 
has slowly but surely created a cult following. And it's not because it's hype. It's because they truly are fantastic, amazing, beautiful pieces of horology history. I think long-term, F.B. Jordan is one of those brands that will be here forever and some. And I always think it will stay as an independent brand and just that's what they like and that's what they want to be. Some of the models that I'm not crazy about is, for example, the Elegante. I think that the technology behind the Elegante is very cool. I think it's a cool idea. Something about the shape of the case and the design, it's not for me. I honestly couldn't see myself wearing one. I mean, I don't know, man. It just, it's got this like weird look for me. I mean, I'm not saying it's ugly. That's not what I said. What I'm saying is it's not for me. I think if I reached down on my watch roll and all I had was that Elegante, first of all, I wouldn't even be there to begin with, but I don't think that I'd be wearing that today or tomorrow. It's just not for me. But I do understand what it is, and I do love the brand wholly and solely. I think that my grail Jordan piece would be the Ruthenium Turbion. I mean, I think anything with a Turbion pretty much from FB Jordan I'll take. But, man, that's just, god damn, that's such a serious watch. I, I freaking absolutely love them. Now, last but not least, is not an easy one, okay? It's not an easy one because I know if you've been watching this video right now, which, by the way, hit the link. Do not forget to hit the link and subscribe, is that... You're probably wondering why I haven't mentioned this other brand, and it's not the one that I'm going to mention. You're probably right now at this moment thinking that I should have mentioned MBNF. But MBNF, as much as I love them, and I think they're really cool and definitely one of those watches that, man, I mean, probably the one that pushes the most boundaries. I don't think it's a watch that I would choose to wear, so that's why I would probably fall in the last five of my top ten you know, somewhere on there, maybe even number six. But number five for me right now at this moment would have to be Purnell. Now, they're really cool looking watches. And, you know, I really had to think if I wanted to choose Purnell over another one of my favorite independents, which would be De Bethune. I love De Bethune. I think that they have badass watches with badass finishes, you know, and those, God, and that blue one. I mean, I love it. You know, I love that brand, but I feel that Purnell right now is making some pieces that are, whew, I mean, they're bringing some heat right now with the way they got those dual gyro tourbillons. I mean, like, those watches are really, really, really interesting. I love the way they look. I love what they're doing, and they're very indie. You know, it's not like they're in your face everywhere. Not everybody has them. I feel like like most independent brands, you know, the marketing is not trying to shove it down your throat. So I, I really enjoy that brand so far, and I like the way they look. And I know my friend Roman out there from uh, Luxury Bazaar would agree with me. He likes Purnell as well, even though he'd probably pick MBF over that. But because um, I had to say that because I know everybody's going to come out and say, how did you not pick MBNF? So when you look at models from Purnell, like the Escape Primo, I mean, what is there not to like? It's got so many different elements there that's just so cool. I mean, you get everything. You get skeletonized Dow. You get a tourbillon. You know, you get a see-through from the front all the way to the back. Pretty much you can see your wrist hairs or see the sunlight if you post it up. And I like the way they look. They got that, I, I don't know, man. I want to say almost a very sporty blend to it that gives me a, a, a little, okay, a tad, a tad, a tad of like an RM feel on how they executed the finishes on the X on the outside of the watch and the inside. I just like them. I think that it's, it's one of those independent brands right now that I like to follow, and I would want to keep my eye on them for quite some time and see what happens and where they go. Then when you get to a model where it has some blink like that escape treasure, whew, I don't know what it is, guys. I you know, hate it or love me, but I like that model. So I feel like those watches are very nice and they're pushing, you know, a lot of interest from me with their design. So these are my five top independent brands, guys. There's still a bunch of other brands that I like, but I just wanted to mention these. Opposed to that, most of my videos is about, you know, the regular day-to-day -day stuff. You also have to think that these brands are usually, you know, when somebody first gets into watches, this is not necessarily what they first gravitate towards. You know, when you start kind of getting over the fact that you paid 
X amount of dollars for a watch is maybe where these watches start to become more your grail pieces or in your category. The fact of the matter is that none of these independent brands that I just mentioned are necessarily affordable watches. I mean, they are not. You know, all these models that I mentioned here are usually going to be some heavy, heavy pieces and take time for your brain to wrap around and like these independent models. But anyways, feel free to comment below if there's anything that you like in the independent brands that maybe I perhaps missed or didn't think about today. And if you like this video, like and share it. Also, don't forget to hit that link and subscribe right now. Until next time, thank you for watching.